Happy Easter, everybody. I've been having just like a pretty chill day. I don't know what it is about like sometimes on holidays. I be this. This sounds so stupid, but I'm just gonna like yap about it. Sometimes on ho holidays, I personally get kind of like sad. Like I've never really done much for Easter, and I just I don't know. I think it's because I have some like childhood trauma, and I just like be getting somewhat sometimes sad during holidays. <sighs> And it's it's kind of I think it's just like family trauma stuff. Like I remember on Christmases, Christmas Eves or Christmas Day, I would watch the SpongeBob episode in my room, and I can just remember it. Um, it's like the weirdly animated one with like the fruit. Was it not fruit? Is it fruit cake? Maybe it's fruit cake. And I would just always be left feeling like kind of kind of sad. I don't know. I went today. I was gonna go to church, and instead I went to a coffee shop by myself because I don't want to go to church alone. So I went to a coffee shop by myself. Um, instead and I watched this one pa pastor that my one pastor recommended me to watch um, And I just watched a bunch of videos on the Holy Spirit and it was really good Honestly, it was pretty good and because I'm trying to learn more about him as a person the Holy Spirit in the in essence is it was really good I'll, I'll have to like link the guy but yeah I, don't, I hope that's not like depressing or not but I don't know I've just felt weird today so gonna spend some more time with God later and then I'm about to go train for the second time that I already worked out once I went uh, first thing in the morning hit shoulders before I thought I was going to go to church. Then I just was like, all right, I'm not going. I'm going to go to the coffee shop and do my own thing. I've been doing the sauna a lot lately, trying to do like 20 minutes in it. And I've been feeling really good off of it. So that's, that's, oh, I did 10 minutes of cardio as well. I got to do a little bit more cardio. I went tanning today. When I say I went tanning, I just went on my balcony and just sat in the sun for a minute. It felt amazing. It's a beautiful day here in Charlotte. Uh, just enough yapping. Let's go. Running the sour green apple. What would you rather get? The blue or the green? I did half a scoop that much water. It's really not a lot of water, but man, this tastes so, I feel like you cannot beat a better flavor profile than a sour green apple flavor. Like that's my favorite energy drink. Uh, but then Rise just kills it with their flavoring of that. Like I don't, if I was to do a pre-workout with them, like I would want to do a sour green apple or like a sour cherry maybe I could do it with them. Cause we were talking about making one, but this green apple bro, has gotta be my favorite like tasting thing like when i eat like candies i'll always go for the green apple one but they killed it with that so code alex 15 percent off half scooping it because i'm not trying to do a whole 400 milligrams of caffeine right now. all right so having a little bit of a chest workout i've been training chest a lot differently than i kind of ever have and therefore i want to make an updated how to grow your chest video now i've done plenty of videos on the whole concept of like how i've built my chest how to grow a bigger chest because that's usually what i'm known for because my chest kind of carries the rest of my physique my training definitely has changed since the first time I've ever made a video back in like freaking 2021 of how to grow a bigger chest back then I used to do a lot more I called it pump training you know it was a lot higher volume lower weight a lot more focused on my most connection which I still do but my training philosophy philosophy was a lot different so now it's a little bit different and then of course I kind of have to train a little bit differently because of my um, dislocated shoulder my torn labrum usually I've always been able to train around it but ever since the last one it was a lot more of a traumatic dislocation uh, I still have not been able to go back to really barbell or, or dumbbell pressing um, the way that I used to which kind of sucks but still regardless going into any chest day I always still recommend that whole entire pre-exhaustion method whereas you pretty much pick a movement that you know you have a really good kind of stretch and squeeze on or a really good pump that you can get out of it you really have a good mind connection in that so sometimes for me I'll do you know sets of push-ups gives me a quick chest pump a lot of times I'll do a fly whether it's a pec deck or a cable Cable fly something that allows me to get a good contraction just kind of force blood into my chest but it's not it's not really exhausting it's not really exhausting my muscle fibers i'm not really gonna you know lose a lot of strength or anything because you want to make sure that when you go into your next exercise it's going to be something that's going to be where you push a lot of weight we're just going to mechanically mechanical tension we're just going to load the muscle as much as we can but we want to make sure that we feel it at the same time a lot of times i know when people go right into a chest pressing movement whether it's a bench press or a plate loaded press and you go right into your sets it takes a while for you to start feeling the blood in your chest and it takes a while for you to kind of feel that my muscle connection so you don't really know if you're getting the best stretch and the best contraction when you already have blood in the chest you can really squeeze a little bit harder and it makes it easier to really feel like you're actually working it so that's why i recommend doing the pre-exhaustion stuff now when it comes to the second movement which honestly is the first main movement of the of the uh workout i always do a heavy pressing movement now that used to be for me you know a flat or an incline barbell or dumbbell press um really would like to use free weights just because i feel like you can load the muscle the best 
that way and you can really focus on mechanical tension and progressive overload but as of recently i only do machines because machines feel a lot better on my shoulder and it's a fixed path you know of motion and i like them because you can kind of do a little bit more intensity with them it's easier to go to failure when you're use, using a machine a plate loaded machine it's easier to do drop sets it's easier to do partials it's safer so it's just kind of a better alternative now in my opinion so that's what i've been doing different i don't really do as much free weights now um so i love doing like an incline plate loaded press sometimes i'll do a smith machine variation um which i love a lot uh, but yeah that's for the most part what i start with now uh, again i'm big on the intensity and lower volume now so my rep range always at least for that movement is six to nine reps if i'm hitting nine reps and i feel like i could do another then i will add like at least 25 pounds to each side um, and I'm cool if I'm around six reps to failure with good form and then I always like to finish either with a few partials or with a static hold and then the last set I'll always do a drop set. I've always done that. The last set, always do a drop set, meaning you go to failure with whatever weight you have on the bar, six to nine reps, drop the weight about 25 to 50%, go to failure again. Um, it's just a way to kind of increase the intensity a bit. So that's always what I do. And now the next movement after that, I'll try my best to find a fly variation that really doesn't irritate my shoulder. Sometimes I can do a pec deck. And when I do a pec deck variation, I like to do a little bit of a wider grip. So you'll see me kind of grab the handles of like the pec deck. Not like the handles that are meant for it, but I'll grab like the actual attachment of the pec deck if that makes sense. And one of the biggest things that have helped me with my shoulder health is getting the extra push is what I call it. I've talked about this in other videos. It's where you act as if you were hugging a tree or a barrel. You can do this in your pressing motions as well. A lot of times they teach you to kind of keep your shoulders back and down, like when you're benching or whatnot. But I found that you get a better squeeze and a better contraction when you really try and push your shoulder and your scapula forward as you're pressing forward. Now, I don't know how to kind of display this unless I was doing it in person, but it's just the act if you held your hands out in front of you with your palms facing down and you try to reach out farther without kind of extending anything, roll your shoulders forward. That's what I mean by like the extra push. Um, it's like rotating your scapula and you get a crazy contraction just by doing that alone So whenever I'm doing a pec deck or whenever I'm doing a press I try and mimic that motion now I do drop the weight a little bit in order to make sure I get that But to me, it's a little bit more worth it because you're getting that extra contraction again It's all about squeezing and contracting as well as stretching. That's why I love doing a fly movement You get a really good stretch uh, I used to be really big on doing flat dumbbell flies, which I don't do as much now But those were used to be my number one go-to exercise now. I just kind of do pec deck or a cable fly um, and then usually I'll finish off, you know, the workout either with some push-ups um, or a another machine plate loaded press. But I'll try and do, you know, if I started with incline, I'll end with decline. Um, just to kind of get a little bit of a different angle variation. But I never do more than three exercises for my chest. And I never do more than two working sets per exercise. So it's only six working sets total for the workout. But if you have adequate intensity, you're lifting heavy, you have a you know, decently long rest time in between each set, and you're doing the drop sets and the partials and whatnot, that's all you need to grow a bigger chest. It's all about executing. If you're working half-assed and you're going, you know, you could have done a few extra reps, and yeah, you probably should add in another working set because you really didn't work that hard on those, those two sets, and you should add another third one. But I know for me, when I'm training hard and I'm dialed in, I only need to do two working sets per exercise and I get just as much growth as if I was doing four half ass, you know, eight to 12 reps type scheme. Yeah, it's, it's really simple advice, bro. This goes for anything, but stretch and squeeze, make sure you're always getting the extra push. Start off with pre-exhausting, really focus on mind muscle connections. Don't just throw them like weight around, but also lift heavy at the same time. We're gonna be test driving a 911 Turbo. This is the old gen, but this is all they had because I'm looking at getting a new daily. Test driving, the 911 Turbo. First impressions of the cockpit. I do like it. It's honestly pretty roomy. These back seats you are not going to fit in whatsoever. There's no leg room unless you're a uh, literal child. I don't even think a child can fit back in these seats. So yeah, that's not really counting. But it, it does got a good like feeling in the cockpit. Like there's a good amount of room. Cool interior. This is the old gen, so even the new gen is gonna be way better, which is the one that I'm looking at getting. So yeah, we're just gonna go dabble and have some fun. The newer, I think it's the, what, the 911-992 Turbo S, uh, like the newer gen one, is 100 more horsepower than this one, because this is a standard turbo and it's the old gen. So 100 more horsepower, and I just did a little mini pull, and a holy, bro, brother, this thing. Rips. Bro, I could not I could not imagine a hundred more horsepower. How do you even Alright we got a straightaway already? We got a straightaway. <laughs> I 
I might really have to get this might be the one bro I've been car shopping so much trying to figure out the ultimate daily bro and it just drives so smooth this feels good this might be the one brother brother come on now the turning feels good it's tight like the steering it picks up so fast bro it's so aggressive <laughs> <laughs> that took that took my breath that's like a that was like a tesla plaid launch i've launched a tesla a few times oh my goodness dude this thing's insane i got a big update for everybody i sold i sold my mercedes maybach if you guys saw like a few videos ago i'm selling my gt500 which if you guys have seen the famous blue poor performance blue gt500 that i modded to close to a thousand wheel horsepower i'm selling it it's got about 7500 miles on if you're interested hit up this email i'll pop up because i i do i'd rather sell it to someone who follows me just so they know like the the legacy behind it and then maybe i could still see it one day down the road but right now it's sitting on a 93 tune so it's at like 760 wheel um i took the exhaust and the headers because the headers were not gonna pass inspection if someone buys it so the stock headers and exhaust are back on it, but it still could be, if you put it back on E85, around 900 wheel horsepower. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'm also setting the headers. It's a American long tube racing headers, Borla attack exhaust, and then a uh, beadlock setup with um, Mickey Thompson Street R drag radials. Those I'm selling for four grand. Exhaust I'm selling for like 1800. Uh, headers for like 1500 and they're catless. So they're hard to find now. So if you're interested in any of those things, hit up the email. Also selling, my Corvette, my C8 Z06, flat plane crank, what is it, 5.5 liter V8, red line, 8,500, roughly right now with the exhaust, it's set close to 700, 707 horsepower to the crank. Um, it's 670 stock, I got a fab speed exhaust. Exhaust setup was like pretty expensive, it was like 10 grand, 12 grand installed, because they're so hard to get right now. It's got high flow cats on it. That I'm um, selling for, it's got 2,500 miles on it. The Shelby has 7,500 miles on it. So if you're interested in any of those things, it's got the Z07 package, carbon options, all that, hit up the email. Now, the reason why it sounds bad, Alex, why are you selling all your cars? You're going freaking bank, all this stuff, people, people are saying, no. Trust me, I have them. Good. I, I first have to make room, because I have an apartment with two parking spots. Joey's driving my M5 back in Maryland right now, um, so I will be stuck with no car. I have a new car that I just bought that's going to be my daily driver, which is still a pretty freaking dope car, but it's already been depreciated a bunch, um, which I'll announce next week when, once I get it. It's still a fire car. I'm excited. Um, second option. Actually, no, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint for the daily. Four liter twin turbo V8. Now, the, now, the reason why I'm doing a lot of this, specifically why I chose to sell the Corvette, I am bidding today on a salvage car if you don't know what that is this is a car that has been in a wreck um and like the insurance whatever takes it to a lot so i'm bidding on it because i want to bring back to life like the anabolic auto channel and just like i love cars bro it's one of my biggest passions and i'm going to do a rebuilding series of rebuilding a wrecked I'm not going to say what the car is we're surprised um, but it's an insane car and i hope to god that we get this bid but thankfully at the charlotte meetup i did um, I had two guys come up to me and they had a shop, a used car dealership. They're like, bro, first off, we've already rebuilt an M4 entirely, engine and all, so they know how to work on cars and they have the spot to do it at and are helping me with the auction. So, bro, it just worked out perfectly, so I'm going. So we have a spot to basically do it at, but yeah, we're gonna be rebuilding a car. Hopefully we get it, I'll be bidding on it today. Um, so I'll probably maybe even document that, but I'm debating whether or not I want to post the series on my main channel or if we should just do it on the anabolic auto channel, I'll probably do it on the anabolic auto. Um, and then if it goes well, I might keep the car or I might raffle it off and sell it to one of y'all and then repeat the process. So that's, that's why I'm doing all that. But I just want to let you guys know, cause it's like a big update for me right now. Um, and I'm extremely excited to kind of like share that. So, but I wanted to do a quick Bible study cause I don't think I've done one for this video yet. Um, it was one that I did this morning on my own. It's out of Hebrews 12. This is if you're going through any hardship right now or any storms I think I've done one on this before but this is just such a good one because it, when you're enduring hardship and like you're going through a battle whether it's you know, you're hurt, divorce, heartbreak, 
something in life isn't going the way you want it to go. Maybe you're lost in life. You don't really have you're, you're misdirected. We all we all go through struggles and storms like that. Never think that you're the only one going through it. We all go through stuff like that. But this is what it says in the Word. We're in Hebrews 12. <clears throat> My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. I'm going to skip down a few verses just so it makes more sense. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Think of any hard event that you have went through in your life. Just brainstorm it. Think of it right now where you really went through and you felt like it was it was just the end of the road now that you have passed it look back on that moment in your mind what do you feel like you gained from that have you gained maturity have you gained some type of experience have you learned from a wrong decision I know 99% of you are gonna find something that you have came out of that that has improved you as a man and it made that situation worth it I can think of plenty of struggles in my life where in those moments I thought God was distant from me and that he was punishing me. Looking back now in retrospect, I see that God was closer then than he ever was because he was disciplining me. He was making me into the man that I am today and I thank him for that. And that's how loving of a father that he is because if he gave me no struggles and no battles in life, first off, I wouldn't feel like I needed him because I just would feel like I'm all good on my own. Second, I would probably be like, I can't use the word because I'm trying to stop cussing. The a cat, a similar word for a cat, but I'm not going to say the word because I'm trying to stop cussing. I would be just a, a frightened, immature, like sensitive little boy. You have to go through hardship to be disciplined to become a man, especially a valued man that someone would even want in life, right? So you have to go through these battles because they, they will always strengthen you and they will harden you to become a better man. I am more mature from all the battles that I've went through. I am more of a understanding, disciplined man from all the battles that I've went through. I've learned from so many mistakes to where now I'm moving forward. I know how to not make those mistakes again. So I thank God for the battles. And if you're going through one now, instead of being like, God is far from me. Where are you, God? Why are you doing this to me? Take it as, Lord, I know that you were disciplining me in this moment. Speak to me of what you want me to learn from this experience and give me the strength and the peace and the joy to endure it. That's what your prayer should be right because he's closer then than he is when he's when you're not going through hardship i'm telling you right now so that's the word of the day love you guys yeah man i've just been people want to ask me for like life updates like how i've been liking charlotte it's been amazing i love it my life has been a lot more at peace and just a lot more simple lately like i don't i'm sure you guys see my content now i don't travel like i used to i'm not going out to la going to zoo culture going to miami all like i used to and i know that might seem like it's more interesting fun content but for me, where I'm at in this point of life, bro, I just enjoy living like a pretty simple life. And I'm hoping the car thing will be like a cool hobby that I get into. And then I've also got, once I get the daily, I have, we have a 300 acre farm here in uh, Madison Heights, Virginia. That's about three, three hours away from Charlotte. So I plan on starting to drive up there more frequently, bringing the GoPros and the drones and just filming some crazy content on the farm, like shooting gun, like shooting guns, lifting, driving K&Ams and four wheelers and documenting that side of me, which a lot of you guys have never seen. So expect content like that coming soon. Stuff that is, is still gonna have my fitness stuff in it, but I'm gonna start being more who I am because fitness industry, industry stuff is kind of whack and I'm not all for it, but that always will be an identity in me. But understand that there's so much more life than just lifting weights. And I'm gonna show you guys that with my content moving forward. Just how to enjoy life, how to have a healthy balance with life, with fitness, with everything, but still having a life outside of fitness. And then your faith, bro. That's all I'm here for. All right, love you guys. God bless. Until next time. Peace out. Code Alex, Rise Supplements, and the Young Lady Drop tomorrow. See y'all.